Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to The Elevator. And thank you for all the positive responses I've got from the last episode. It's been really nice to see that people have been enjoying it. Even if they thought I was just making it a little bit too off the wall, I don't mind that. I'm, I'm glad that people are having fun. So, we left this last week at the point where we were talking about the murderer, the murderer our, our hero had tracked down, and how even up to the point of death, you know, the point of being executed, he still did not, he didn't recant upon his actions, he didn't want to, he didn't want to see them as anything other than his holy duty to um, sacrifice these people to bring them closer to Ashiva, his, his, his own personal deity, or at least the one that the fungus in his head told him that uh, was his personal deity. So let's let's move on. Another morning, another twenty-minute ride up the elevator. I had heard that this is slow even by ancient relic standards, but I have nothing to base it on, and it's not like we have any mechanics who will fix something like this up. Twenty minutes is just enough time for me to collect my thoughts, or let my one my one. Or oh, let my mind wander back to the past and what I remember of it. Usually, it's the second one. Eleanor's here again. Of course she is. She looks like she's deep in thought. Hmm. What should we do here? That was a good time to get a call. Okay, I think I edited most of that out. Okay, so. We can greet her or we can leave her be and... Yeah, I think we should greet her. Let's 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 say hello. Good morning. Oh, good morning, detective. Sorry, I was lost in my thoughts. I could tell. Got a problem at work? You seem a little more tired than usual. Huh? Tired? How could you figure? I pointed her shoulders. Your shoulders are sagging. Normally your posture is beyond reproach. I am amazed you noticed something like that. I suppose it's that's what's being a detective is all about, though. I bet you can tell all sorts of things about a person just by looking at them. These days, not so much. I'm just getting used to you. Ha! Ah, there you go, being modest again. Eleanor and I make a bit of small talk before we reach her floor and she says goodbye. Work is pretty slow these days. But I can't complain. It just means people aren't be aren't getting in trouble as much this week. The less bed dead bodies me and John have to find, the better. Yeah, so how was she today? He really is pretty nosy, especially when there's nothing else for him to do but bother me about my non existent love life. She was fine, seemed a little tired. You noticed something like that? It was pretty obvious. Is what I say, but maybe I am too conscious of her. Well, when it's just two people in a little elevator day after day, you can't help but notice each other, I guess. Anyway, jokes aside, I've got some disturbing news today. Pretty nasty stuff. What is it? The Jensen kid we found last week. He's dead. What? What the hell happened? He was killed on the south. Sure. My blood runs cold when I hear these two words. The South Shore, Avery McMillan. I put the thoughts out of my head. McMillan's dead and plenty of people go to the South Shore now. Accidents, even the occasional murder, happen every day. I try to calm down before my paranoia affects my judgment. Are we being put on the case? No. The police are taking care of it. The parents just wanted to update us since we'd worked so hard on finding him. It seems that they were there on a family outing. The boy disappeared from their sight for a few minutes, and then he was found washed up on the shore. Dead. God, you think they'd keep a better eye on him after he'd vanished the first time? It's not their fault. No one expects these things to happen. Yes, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, Dave. 
Don't blame yourself. It's just a tragedy. I hope the police can catch him. They've never done half as well on homo case, homicide cases since you left. But yes, I hope so too. Hell, what is the world coming to? The next morning, I'm waiting in the lobby for the elevator to come down to the first floor. The Jensen case floats to the forefront in my mind, and I sigh. Had some more trouble with the cat? Eleanor. I hear the click-clack of her high heels on the tile floor as she walks up to me and stands by my side. I sigh again. I wish it was as simple as all that. The two of us step into the elevator together, press the buttons for our respective floors, and settle in as usual. What is it? Well, I feel like I shouldn't ask what you're so upset about, but I do want to know. Why do you feel you can't ask? Don't detectives have some sort of confidentiality agreement with their clients? It wouldn't do for me to pry. Oh, I see. That's actually a pretty legitimate concern. Eleanor's a lot more thoughtful than I give her credit for. Actually, this time I'm worried about something the whole district knows about. The, that murder that happened on the South Shore yesterday. Oh, that. I heard about it too. What an unfortunate incident. His family must feel awful. No doubt. And after they'd just been reunited too. Reunited? Shit. The boy's disappearance wasn't public knowledge. Me and my big mouth. I'm never this careless. Not usually. Something about this girl just lowers my guard. It must be those big, innocent uh, eyes and how she's so easy for even an old man like me to talk to. <sighs> Do you know what? I think at this point that... I think that our hero here just wants to open up and this this woman is... Well, I think it's the only person that's really talking to him apart from his partner and... So let's go. Let's just go ahead and explain. To tell the truth, the boy actually disappeared once a few weeks ago. My partner and I were hired to find him. You mean to say something happened to him even before this? Yes. After a few weeks we found him, but he had no memory of what happened while he was gone. At any rate, we were just satisfied that he could be reunited with his family. But then this happens. Oh, that's so sad. I can't even begin to imagine how his family might feel right now. Oh, but is it all right for you to be telling me all this? I can't see that it would hurt anything. Just don't go blabbing about it to anyone, I guess. I can trust you with that much, right, Helena? Oh, of course you can, Detective. I don't really have anyone to tell anyway. What you mean? <laughs> Sorry, it was nothing. What a peculiar girl. I wonder if, like me, she feels alone at times. She wouldn't have said it like that if it wasn't something that bothered her, right? So, how was the elevator girl today? I have no life. Please provide me with some entertainment. You seem awfully concerned about her job. As usual, I suppose. Ah, you think so? It's just that I never see you interact much with anyone but me, so I guess I'm just happy that you're widening your horizons a little. Making small talk with someone in an elevator is considered widening your horizons these days. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take what I can guess. Is there any news on the Jensen case? No, it's only been 24 hours after all. I see. When John doesn't say anything, I look up, and I'm surprised to see him look so worried. This guy's normally the balancing act of my infinite pessimism, after all. What's the matter with you? I, I've been thinking. Um, maybe you shouldn't worry so much about this case. Huh? What do you mean by that? It's got some parallels with the South Shore Killer case, right? You were really out of it back then, before and after Macmillan was caught. 
I think it's best if you keep your mind off all this. You dwell on that case too much as it is. What? I don't dwell on it. Are you kidding me? You think about it every day. Don't try to lie to me, Dave. I know you better than anyone. Who was your partner in on that case? I hate to admit it, but John tried. I do think about the Macmillan case a lot. But he can blame but who can blame me? But can he blame me? Hey, let's do that one right. But can he blame me? It's not as if I have many other memories to think about. The force took them away from me. For better or for worse. And what's wrong with thinking about it? It's unhealthy, that's what. Look, it's been almost twenty years since he was executed. He's not here any more. The killing stopped. So why are you still acting like he might pop out from round the corner at any given moment? That's not what I worry about. That's not it at all. But how do I explain my thoughts to John? I don't even understand it myself. Ashura. In an ancient language it meant whole heaven. Ashura slayed Tiamat, the embodiment of chaos, and created the world of man. He's usually shown as being a warrior representing the sun. The god Avery Macmillan believed in wasn't some satanic war god or anything like that, but a god that apparently created the world. Not many people believe in god anymore. While science hasn't exactly disproved the existence of one just yet, people nowadays are more concerned with the here and now than the hereafter. Even while on the stand for his own murder trial, Macmillan preached about his god. For whatever reason, he truly believed that what he was doing was right. He tortured people when they couldn't accept this truth. He killed them once they did, because then they'd be reunited with Ashura. I wonder if his victims died peacefully, accepting a god that only existed in the mind of a delusional murderer. The thought makes me want to throw up. Why do I always think about the South Shore killer case? I caught the guy. Tests and examinations showed that he was definitely not in his right mind. Good trial, Dover. Not evil, exactly, but the killing of innocents, at least. Macmillan did say his victims were innocent. In fact, that was why they were chosen, to populate the kingdom of heaven with good souls. How he chose his victims, even now, is a mystery to me. Though he talked endlessly about Ashura and about his family, Macmillan never revealed specifics about his methods or about his victims. People begged him to reveal if he'd killed others. There were hidden bodies that were never found, but he never did. My family, Detective Carmichael. You have to make sure that they're safe. I was in a cruel mood that day, so I simply said that I could make no guarantees. Macmillan stared blankly at me for a few moments before grinning. Well, it's all right if you don't, though you will have points subtracted. It would have been nice for them to live a bit longer, but Ashura will decide when it's time for them to come to me. That was it. As much as I wanted him to know how guilty he was, as much as the families of the dead wanted him to suffer, he never did. He accepted his death almost happily, and when he was gone, there was no closure. Not for the victims' families? Definitely not for me. God, I think that's the problem. Catching him and watching him die did nothing to make me feel like my ideals held true. Even though he died, I didn't feel like he paid for his crimes. Even now, I'm not at peace with the world or with myself. But he was. Does that mean I was wrong? But how could I be wrong? And yet, if I was right, why aren't I happy? Why don't I feel proud about what I did? Macmillan was insane, no doubt. But these nagging worries I have, little thorns in my chest, are a sort of madness too. Ellen has been quiet today. I wonder if I'm projecting my bad mood onto her. She never bothers me whenever I stand here with a scowl on my face. Not like I have to talk to her. Sometimes a whole week goes by when neither of us say anything except good morning and goodbye. She's a young woman in the peak period of her life and I'm a dried up old man. Okay, John would get on my case for that. You're barely, <clears throat> oh boys, you're barely in your forties. 
If you're an old man, that means I'm one too, and I'm sure as hell not getting into that boat with you. Still, there's a limit to how much she can humor me with conversation, or how much I can bore her with it. A few weeks, a few quiet weeks go by. A young man gets apprehended for the Jensen murder and confesses to the crime, says it was an impulse. What a goddamn awful impulse to have. My bad mood passes and things get back to normal. You've got some color in your face today. You think so? Yes, good for you, Dave. I don't feel particularly happy or anything, but I guess anything above depressed is a pretty good state to be in. Elevator girl must have said something nice to you today. I don't bother replying. If I show much as sneeze, John will think Helen is involved somehow. John clocks out at seven or so, and I leave a couple of hours later once all my work's done. I know I shouldn't think like this, but peaceful times worry me. You know Murphy's Law? All the time I feel like that if I let my guard down, all hell will break loose when I least expect it. Come on, David, don't think about this stuff. I close my eyes and try to think about something more positive. A warm breeze, white shandy beaches. Shit, I shouldn't think about the beach. Oh, someone's leaving at the same time as me? Must be someone from the, the pharmaceutical company. They're the only ones that ever seem to keep late hours like I do. I've run into the scientists a couple of times. Eh, <clears throat> Oh, Detective Carmichael. Eleanor, what are you? I cut my shelf off, feeling foolish. Obviously she's leaving work at the same time as I am. I've never seen you leave this late before. Well, I normally leave earlier, but... I made a mistake at work today, and it took some time to fix everything. What kind of mistake had you here this late? I miscopied some papers. Well, to be fair, I was just following orders. I ended up taking the fall for a superior's mistake. Sounds pretty rough. It's nothing compared to what you do, I'm sure. Do you normally leave the slate? Something like that. I don't like leaving things half done. Ah, <laughs> I can believe that. You seem like the meticulous type. You think so? Sure. Once we reach the lobby... We can see the heavy rain outside. Damn, I didn't bring an umbrella. He must be crying today. What? I am sorry. You just said that someone must be crying today. He. What do you mean by that? Oh, it's nothing. Really, just something I, um... She trails off. I've never seen Eleanor this melancholy before. If we press her for details, she's just going to clam up like a clam that's still feeling really clammy. Let's wait for her to continue. There's no point in forcing an answer out of her, and she doesn't want to tell me. With the rain this heavy, I'm not exactly keen on rushing out into it, so I can afford to wait. After some silent moments pass by, Ellen finally decides to continue. Promise you won't laugh. Not a hard promise for me to make. When I was little, my father died. I'm sorry to hear that. But before he did, he told me something. He said he'd always be with me, even if I couldn't see him. He said that if it was sunny, it means he was smiling down at me. And if it's raining, it means he's crying? Something like that. I never could stand it when my father cried, even then. I wonder what he's sad about today. A man who had no shame in crying in front of his young daughter. That's pretty impressive in its own way. Sounds like you had a very sentimental father. <laughs> he was just the kind of person. He stuffed me and my siblings' heads full of stories. Even now I remember a lot of things he told me and hold my memories close. I suppose it's childish of me to believe in such things, but to forget would be disrespectful. To forgive would be even worse. Your father really cared about you. It's obvious that he raised you well, seeing that what a good person you are now. Thank you, Detective. That's grand of you. 
Well, it looks like the rain's letting up, and so I won't keep you any longer. She you tomorrow. I'd never said such a thing to her before, but it just feels right somehow to say it tonight. Does that make me sound too eager? Is it foolish of me to feel like this young woman and I are building rapport? Yes, I am sure you will. We're making a habit of running into each other, aren't we? I'd say we made that habit months ago. I guess you're right, Detective. Well, see you tomorrow, then. And that seems like a good time to end it. I am really, really, really starting to get an impression that I have an idea about how this is going to end. And I wonder if you guys too as well. Hey, let's have some speculation in the comments, eh? Hey? So, until the next time, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been The Elevator. Thank you and good night.